I'm a horror game enthusiast. I live for the adrenaline, the feeling of my heart pounding against my ribcage as I navigate dark corridors, eerie landscapes and face unspeakable monsters. I thought I had seen it all, that is, until I downloaded Cry of Fear. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this game, it's a first-person psychological horror experience that does a fantastic job of making you feel uneasy and paranoid. I played it on my PC, alone in my room, the shades drawn and my headphones on. The sound design, the visuals, the gameplay, all of it was captivating. I finished it within a week, but the game left an impression that was far from ordinary. A sensation, a residue of the horror that stayed with me, leaking into my daily life. It started with the nightmares. Cliché, I know, but these were different. These weren't dreams filled with monsters chasing me or falling into an abyss. No, these were mundane situations that twisted into horrifying scenes that felt too real. One night, I dreamt I was at my job. I work at a small software development firm, nothing too interesting. In the dream, I was typing away on my keyboard when the room went dark and my screen flickered. The screen then displayed a single phrase, you can't escape me. Another night, it was a simple family dinner that morphed into a grotesque feast where the food turned into rotten, decayed matter as soon as it touched my lips. Each time, I woke up in a cold sweat, the details vivid in my mind. Then came the hallucinations, or at least I hoped they were hallucinations. The first occurred as I was walking back home after a late night snack run. The street was mostly empty, the only light coming from the distant street lamps. I saw a figure standing far away, its silhouette barely visible. It stood motionless. What chilled me was that the shadowy figure seemed to emanate an aura of dread, similar to the atmosphere of cry of fear. I blinked and it was gone. I attributed it to my exhausted mind playing tricks on me, but deep down I wasn't so sure. Things escalated when I started hearing whispers while alone in my room. The whispers were incoherent but menacing, like a malicious murmur only I could hear. It felt like the walls were closing in on me, feeding off my fear. At this point I knew I needed help. I started with a psychologist, explaining my symptoms without going into the game-related details. I was prescribed medication for anxiety and hallucinations. A week passed and the symptoms didn't go away. They intensified. I couldn't sleep, couldn't work. My life started spiralling out of control, each waking moment a battleground between reality and nightmare. Friends and family grew concerned, but no one could understand what I was going through. As I was surfing the internet, I came across a news report that several people committed suicide after playing the Cry of Fear game. Details were not given in the news, but even this information was enough to disturb me. Will I end up like these people? Desperate for a solution, I scoured forums and subreddits, looking for anyone who had experienced similar after-effects post-playing a horror game. Surprisingly, I found a thread with a few people who had played Cry of Fear and had similar but less intense experiences. Someone mentioned a cleansing ritual that involved wiping your PC clean of the game files and burning a physical copy of a particular image from the game. It sounded ridiculous, but I was desperate. I followed the steps meticulously, erasing every trace of the game from my PC and burning a printed screenshot of the game's most terrifying scene. Did it work? I wish I could say it did, but my ordeal didn't end. My symptoms have lessened. The nightmare's less frequent, but every so often, when I'm alone, walking down a dimly lit street or working late in my room, I hear those whispers, and I know whatever door cry of fear opened in my mind has not fully closed. I still live with that residual fear, the blur between game and reality, forever questioning the nature of my experiences. Was it all in my head? A severe psychological reaction? Or did cry of fear somehow bridge the gap between the digital world and my psyche? I may never know, and that's my true horror story. I live it every day, every night, in the shadows of my room and the depths of my mind. So if you're thinking of diving into the unsettling world of cry of fear, consider this a warning. Some games should never be played. Since I haven't been to the sea for two years, we wanted to go on a family holiday to the sea this summer. We rented the most affordable house by the sea at the end of August, which was the best time. It was a great advantage that the house was close to the sea, but the house was very old. When we got into the house on Monday morning, there was a strong odour in the house, However, this smell went away on its own half an hour after we settled in the house. We had no problems for the first few days. However, one night, while we were cleaning the house, 
we found an amulet in a leather bag between the sofa. We didn't know why this amulet was here, but it wasn't something we gave much thought to at that moment. We said I think someone dropped their bag and dropped the subject. However, the night I experienced the actual incident, I went to bed late. As I was getting into bed to sleep, I felt something grab my foot and pull it. Since I believed in such evil beings and knew that they enjoyed those moments of fear, I tried to act as if nothing had happened, even though I was very scared. But after a few quiet minutes, I heard something knocking on the window of the house. To get rid of this moment as soon as possible, I pulled my quilt completely over me and tried to sleep. I have no idea when I fell asleep, but somehow I managed to fall asleep and woke up to the sound of my mother's voice. Then, after a few more days without any problems, we came to the end of the holiday and headed home. While I was on the road, I suddenly remembered the amulet in the leather bag we found between the seats. Thereupon, I started researching on Google why this amulet might be there. As I learned, people who want to cast a spell on someone prepare these special amulets in leather bags and place these amulets in the homes of the people they want to cast a spell on. We were not the target of this spell because after I left that house, I never experienced anything like this again. However, I still do not know whether these evil people prepared this amulet because of their hostility towards the owner of that house or because they just wanted to disturb the holidaymakers staying in that house. My name is Alex. I've always been an outdoor lover, so it's no surprise that I eagerly accepted when my old friend Rob suggested a weekend hiking trip. Rob is an architect, a rational guy. He planned out the route, calculated the risks, and advised on the equipment. We were both well prepared and had been on countless treks before, but nothing could have prepared us for what awaited us. We decided to hike in a lesser known area, not very popular due to its uneven terrains and the eerie folklore surrounding it. The locals talked about the Watcher in the Woods, a figure who was said to roam the forest observing anyone who entered. We chalked it up to small town myths and proceeded with our plans. The first day was fantastic. Nature was beautiful and the air was crisp. As the sun set, we set up camp and shared dinner under the stars. Eventually, we crawled into our separate tents and fell asleep to the peaceful sounds of the forest. In the middle of the night, I woke up to a rustling sound. It was a soft, deliberate noise, like the turning of a page in a book. I convinced myself it was just the wind, but the noise seemed to move around my tent, as if circling it. Then it stopped. The next morning, I didn't mention it to Rob. No reason to scare him over what was probably a raccoon or a deer. We had breakfast, packed up, and continued our hike. As we walked, we felt increasingly uneasy. The forest, so welcoming yesterday, now seemed to close in on us. Every snapped twig and rustle of leaves made us turn around, expecting to see someone, or something, behind us. We reached our second campsite early in the afternoon and decided to spend the rest of the day exploring the area. While walking, Rob paused to tie his shoelace. I stood there waiting for him when I noticed something odd, a footprint that didn't belong to either of us. It was larger, with a deeper imprint as if belonging to someone carrying a heavy load, or someone very heavy. I took a photo with my phone, thinking it was just a curious anomaly. By nightfall, we were back at the campsite. We had dinner and tried to enjoy the evening, but the atmosphere was tense. I decided to address the elephant in the room. Rob, have you felt like we're being watched? Rob looked at me, and for the first time I saw genuine fear in his eyes. I thought it was just my imagination, he admitted. We retired to our tents but agreed to keep our phones close and stay alert. It took me a long time to fall asleep, but eventually exhaustion took over. I was jolted awake by a text message. It was from Rob. The message read, Do not come out, no matter what you hear. I gripped my phone tightly as I listened. What I heard next froze my blood. Footsteps approaching my tent. They stopped just inches away from where I lay. I dared not move. My breath caught in my throat as I heard the zipper of my tent slowly being pulled down. But then, abruptly, it stopped. The footsteps retreated quickly, disappearing into the night. A few minutes later, Rob texted again. It's gone. I scared it away. When morning light broke, we packed up faster than we ever had. We practically ran back to our car, abandoning our initial hiking route. As we drove back, Rob told me he saw a silhouette lurking near my tent last night. 
He had shouted and flashed his torchlight, scaring it away. That trip was our last venture into the wilderness. We never spoke of it again, but I know we both relived that night over and over in our minds. I've bought new hiking gear since then, but not a new sense of security. That was lost, somewhere deep in those woods, along with my naivete that some horrors are only myths. The Watcher in the Woods is no myth and I have the photo to prove it.